Yeah. Live. What's going on, fellas? Hopefully, everybody had a great Sunday. Uh, I got kids about to start class in a little bit, so you don't have to listen to me ramble quite as much today. Uh, yeah, that's. A, yeah, I don't want to say it's a good thing or a bad thing. Like we have talk about with a lot of other things, there's pros and there's cons. There we go, guys. All right, let's run right through this stuff. We're going to be quick and fast and furious today. <coughs> Excuse me. I think we know who the favorite one is in this one. But before we get into it, don't forget the website link to the DFS 5-pack is below. For only $69, you can get the rest of the season, all the NFL material that we put out. We did a nice long video today breaking down all the different tournament bills and cash game bills that we like for this slate tonight. Uh, feeling very, very good about it. Day passes are available as well. Uh, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and get your money in at overlay. Give me some Gronk over Evan Ingram tonight. Uh, if you want to start playing on overlay, do it. The matchup shop is fire. We got parlays. We got one via ones. There's all sorts of things you can do, but do yourself a favor, screenshot your initial deposit for brand new players, send it to me and let Bellman and I hook you up with a free membership to the five pack. Yeah, let's get it, man. Um, well, I, I'll just say this: like I had, I, I did a little five-team parlay on overlay in the matchup shop, and going into you know after Thursday night, I was one and zero. I had Matt Ryan over Bridgewater, feeling good. Ian Thomas only at four point three, and I lost all the, the all the four of them. Yeah, I had a, uh, I did pretty well yesterday, except for I had one like eight-way parlay that I went one and seven on. That wasn't even close. Right. Not even close. Now you know who is close to being a lock for virtually any lineup I said is Mr. Tom Brady himself. This is just your classic DFS five pack first pick Occam's razor kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid pick load up on Tampa Bay. It starts with their quarterback. Uh, he is still pretty good at what he does. The giants are, he's got a high floor. He's captain eligible. Uh, and honestly, guys, if you're looking for narratives, uh, he lost two Super Bowls to the Giants. So even though it's not the same guys, I'm sure he doesn't mind rolling into New York and dropping uh, multiple touchdown passes on him. I'm sure he does not mind that at all. He looks good. Uh, still trying to, you know, fully get acclimated in this Tampa Bay offense. They've started to really gel the past couple weeks. Even with no Godwin here, I expect uh, it to continue. Really good spot for Tampa against a uh, weak Giants team here. Only reason to maybe not captain Brady here is because you don't think the Giants can keep this game competitive and he's not throwing a lot. That leaves you with some alternate builds. If you want to check out some of those, you know, sign up for a membership and check out our members only video. All right, next up, Buccaneers defense. So uh, honestly, like literally before getting on this video, I just got a tweet uh, question from somebody. What do you think about the Bucks defense? I like it. Um, I don't know if you guys know this about Daniel Jones, but he's terrible. He loves to turn it over. Maybe he doesn't love it, but he's really good at it. I believe he leads the league in fumbles since entering. He throws plenty of picks. He is in a terrible spot tonight against the Buccaneers defense. That's really, really good. Uh, he did a couple games this year where he's been competitive and hasn't had to force it. But what happens in this game when they're inevitably down double digits and they're trying to force it? Look for a couple more turnovers. And I will rarely say this about a defense but honestly, I have the odds that them at scoring tonight defensively is like darn near 50-50 because the Bucks defense is legit. They're so expensive. People won't want to go here too, which will keep their ownership down uh, in GPPs a little bit. Uh, they're in a crush spot here. I wonder how many defensive touchdowns have, have occurred this year, like in how many games. I think that would give you a better idea of like the actual numbers. Now, I get your point. It's a lot higher than the average tonight because you've got a good Buccaneers defense against Daniel Jones. I got no argument there. Running a defense in the captain spot did me very well yesterday. They weren't high-owned at all. Neither defense, the Cowboys especially, were really low-owned, but even the Eagles weren't tremendously high-owned. I'm hopeful that the price keeps people off the Bucks D because they are in a crush spot, you know, a primetime game, Monday Night Football. There's always the, the chance in any of these games that Tampa comes in and lays an egg, but, man, we both struggle to see that here. You know, Tom Brady-led team. Like I said, they're finally gelling. Get up spot on Monday Night Football. They play the Saints next week. I, I'm with you, man. I like the Bucks D a lot here. Yeah, the other thing about the Bucks D, especially if you, like, prioritize this, if something happens, and again, like, I can be aggressive and say, like, I like the idea of them scoring tonight. It's not normal for a defense to score. I'm, I would believe you about those numbers are under 10%. So it's not likely for a defense to score. I just think this is a really good spot for them to do it right here. <laughs> if the defense does that, 
it cuts into the points that the offense scores. So it does help your overall build on that idea. No doubt. All right. Next up, Rob Gronkowski. Um, this is one of my, I am a Patriots hater, but I've always loved Rob Gronkowski. Why? Because he just seems like a cool dude that you'd like to drink a beer with. That doesn't help you tonight, but something you said in the members only video, everybody loves to roster Rob Gronkowski because he just seems like a very likable guy. Uh, that does, in a weird way, kind of affect his ownership maybe more as a guy that you want to look at in cash games as opposed to GPPs. But I just happen to like him everywhere here. You know, AB isn't on the team yet. No Godwin. He's a red zone mismatch. He's not as fast as he once was. But you can't defend a guy with this skill set and this size. So I expect him to hit pay dirt here because he still has wonderful rapport with Tom Brady. He does. Um, you know, you mentioned in our members only video, the, the Bucks or Brady didn't even throw that many passes a couple of games ago. And, and, he, and Gronk still got there because he's he got a lot of the targets. He scored. He looks good right now. The Giants really have no answer to him. Even if you think that, the Bucks roll here and they're not throwing a ton in the second half. You got to believe that they have the ball a lot and they got there somehow in the first half. So I'm with you, you know, no Brown yet. Godwin's out. Evans, as, as you've been saying, is banged up. I mean, he leads this team in targets since week three. So there's that as well. I mean, that's without saying it, that's what I was trying to say. He is becoming a target monster for Tampa Bay. Tom looks for him. Tom knows him. They have rapport. They feel good playing together so look for that to continue tonight because even if they doesn't have that upside like you said with the giant score they're, they're not going to stop throwing because they're up 14 up i still don't feel like it's the ground of old like when i watch it to you no it's not he's not he's uh he, this guy has had so many injuries the reason the patriots got him for steal is because he was injured a lot in college like he's been injured in professional career injuries add up but he's still a physical freak as far as his size goes and he has great red zone um you know, advantages down there. So the way that they use him, I expect him to score, but he'll never be the guy he once was. For sure. All right, next up, Leonard Fournette. So this is an interesting question as far as who you want to target from a running back situation on the day in Bay Buccaneers. If you ask me just on raw points, I'd probably still rather take Rojo, but there is a substantial price difference right here. And quite frankly, after talking this one out for an hour on members only, we concluded that uh, there is no right or wrong answer, that there's good reasons to like both. Uh, Fournette appears to be the man in the passing attack right now, um, mostly because, I don't know, Ronald Jones drops the ball a lot, and Fournette's a very capable guy within there. They're both good. They're both talented. They may ride the hot hand, play them both, play them separately. I don't, can't tell you which one is going to be the guy playing better tonight but they seem to be motivating one another. So it's very possible. They both have double digit touch on the score. Yeah. They're both wildly in play. I think it's just easier to roster for net because if these guys were the same price, I think that it would still be a toss up for me. So like they're not the same price. So in an optimal build for me, I like for net more seems like Jones is the starting running back. But that's about the only advantage he has over Fournette when Fournette's healthy. Like you mentioned, it seems like they want, at least they've said they want Fournette to be like the closer in the fourth quarter. They seem to, you know, get about the same amount of reps, and he's just way cheaper here. So I do like the idea of rostering both in tournaments. You know, I think you can roster either one separately. You can roster them together. If you want to just use the Bucks passing game, there's always that route. They're both just really good looks here. And Fournette, you know, considering Jones is close to 9K, is too cheap at 6K. And here's the thing about this one, guys. It, your opinion on these guys is probably going to change a couple more times before the year ends because they're going to ride the hot hand. You're going to think it's Fournette and it's going to be Rojo. You're going to think it's Rojo, it's going to be Fournette. It's just the nature of running backs in general in the NFL and specifically this team right now. And what this might really come down to is who just happens to be in the game when they get down there and they're close to the end zone and who gets to run one in. I don't know who that's going to be. That's yet to be determined, but like you said, uh, Fournette's a lot cheaper, so he does make your roster construction significantly easier. Yep. All right, last up, Wayne Gallman Jr., and I want to be very clear on this one, too. Um, I know there are people that just watch videos quick. They see the names. They just enter them in there. This is not a hard recommendation from us. This is a discussion point that we want to talk about. In the captain showdown format of DraftKings, you are required to start somebody from each team, and you're going to have to look at at least one New York Giant right here. And we want to talk about Wayne Gallman 
who is going to be the starting running back tonight for the New York Giants with Devontae Freeman out. Uh, he's kind of expensive and not expensive, if that makes sense. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, he's not expensive for a starting running back. He's kind of expensive for who he is based on the matchup that he has right here. We both like the way he ran last week, but it's not like he was actually that effective on a yards per carry basis. It's hard to run on Tampa. For me, the big question is, what happens when they get down? Because I inevitably think they'll be down. Is it Deion Lewis? Is it Wayne Gallman? Is it some guy that we don't even know about? I don't know what the answer is, um, but Wayne Gallman will get the first crack at it. Yeah, so that's why I, I, I kind of wanted to bring him you know, up to discuss because the big point that you mentioned is you have to roster a Giants player. So it's easy to spend down. You know, there's obviously a couple of guys really cheap that you can look at. Gallman, I completely agree with you, though. He is too expensive for Wayne Gallman. For example, last showdown slate he was on, he was like under, or he was like $1,000 in a much better matchup. But now he's the starting running back and he's too cheap for like that role normally. He's, you know, obviously not in a good spot against Tampa. But what if like they just use him as an all three down back? And I don't think that's crazy at all. We saw it last week him get five catches. Now he looked, as we mentioned, and as I said on the members only video, he looked about as good as you could look last week, but. He did look good. I mean, he looked better than Freeman has looked for them, in my opinion. And I agree with you. He's going to get the first crack. We don't know what they're going to do on third down when they get down in the game, et cetera. But he's not too expensive where you can't risk it. That's my opinion. Daniel Jones is also so bad that if you roster one of the wide receivers, they're not even guaranteed to get a completion, right? Like this Tampa Bay defense is legit. And I can see Daniel Jones at the end of the day being like, 11 of 29 with 111 yards passing and guys like Tate Shepard and Slayton are like 220. At least Gallman gets reps and he's relatively affordable. If that's going to make the case for him, if you want to spend down farther, I get that one too. Uh, I just don't expect much offense out of the giants tonight. So it's difficult to even want to play one of their guys. For sure. makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, if you can slide your finger over to that thumbs up button, Click on it. Uh, we appreciate you know, what you all do for us. Good luck tonight. We'll see you guys at some point probably tomorrow. Thanks, guys.